Hey everyone, it's Sim here from The Fusing Shop. First, I'd like to give a shout out to Matthew Miller, who sent me this picture way back in June, and my apologies for taking so long to post it. It's of some awesome marbles and pendants, and that's after a month of being on the torch, and these look really good, Matthew. Keep up the good work. Uh, guys, don't be bashful to send me in your glass work. I always like seeing what you guys are working on. And I decided to remake a bunch of my old videos due to, you know, audio issues and my new camera and whatnot. So the first video I'm starting with is going to be my icicle video. And that was actually made over a year or so ago, which is pretty cool to think about. And uh, first got to get some rock and tunes on. And this doesn't take much class. If you've seen my first video, this is, we're going to put a new spin on it. No pun intended. Um... And you're going to need a clear rod. I'm using a 10 millimeter clear rod. And uh, kindly hit that like button while we get the reminder on the screen. Thank you so much for taking the time to do that, guys. Really appreciate it. And um, like I said before, it does take me a lot of time to make these videos. And I love teaching and giving over what I know to people. So if you could hit that like button and subscribe and all that other good stuff, it is highly appreciated. Uh, first thing I'm doing is peeling off some crud off the end of that rod. Whenever you uh, take out a rod, it's always a good idea to clean off the end and make sure that there's no um, bubbles or imperfections there. And now I'm going to start making a gather. So to make the gather, there's a great shot of the elbows down position. The glass is angled down. And this will help the glass gather up on itself. I'm keeping the very tip of the glass in the flame a lot of my students, you know, put like the whole rod in the flame, thinking that it's going to work better. Uh, it does not, people. Just keep the very end of the rod in the flame. And you should not be like halfway past the flame. If you are, you're too far in. So just move your hand a little bit out. Now my hand is in what's called a neutral position, where the glass is parallel with your work, working surface. And just keep rotating. I use my thumb and index finger for rotating and use my pinky and um, ring finger for support. And just let that glass gather in on itself. It does take some time, so don't rush the process. And just, you know, put on some, like I said before, some rock and tunes. And it's a very relaxing experience. Try to keep your hand as steady as possible as you do this. And you can see how that gather is forming nicely. Uh, depending on how big you want your icicle will depend on how big you form the gather. So if you want to make it bigger than mine, uh, either use a larger rod to start with, or you could gather more glass. For me, this is a good size, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, work with this. Now, your next step is to get your smashers ready. You can use graphite paddles to do this. I just happen to have these handy pair of smashers available. So we're going to get that glass nice and juicy hot. And we're going to only put the hot glass in the smasher. And just give it a good smush. You can make it thinner if you want. I like the thickness that came out, so I'm going to leave it like this. And you get that cool little lollipop shape. I'm going to take a rod of cobalt blue. One of my favorite colors to use for glasswork. And we're going to run a bead of color right on the edge of the lollipop. So touch that down to the top. I like to do half at a time. So I run the bead across, uh, starting from the tip of the lollipop down the side. And then I go to the other side and do the same. You could run it from end to end if you want. This is just the way I like to do it. And again, you just want to keep that glass right on the edge. You want that blue right on the edge of that clear. And this is going to make a cool twisty effect when we twist it up later. Here I'm sharpening up that end of the color because I'm going to use it as a punty in a minute. Got to switch songs. And now I just want to make sure that color is fully melted in and fully fused on. Here's a shot to show you that it's just on the edge. And just rotate that glass, make sure it's nice and cooked in. 
And while I'm doing that, let's do the dad joke for today's video. And the dad joke is, uh, my wife said I should do lunges to stay in shape. That would be a big step forward. Definitely would be a big step forward and eventually a painful step forward if you uh, do enough of those. But it is good to keep yourself in shape. So definitely do your exercise, guys. Give that a little bit of a smush with the smasher. Make sure everything looks nice and lined up. The effect we're looking for is to have just, uh, the color on the edges only and have the center of the uh, icicle clear, which is pretty cool looking. And it's a little bit different than how I originally taught it, which was to apply the color to the face of the lollipop. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check out my original video if you haven't already. But also go and like and thumbs up and all that other good stuff to that video too. Uh, what I did is I attached my cobalt blue rod as a punty to the edge of that color. This way it won't leave any scar marks or any uh, discoloration. And there's my subscribe reminder. Hit the bell too if you want to be notified of any upcoming videos. I know I haven't posted in a while. The summer was, thank God, very busy with us. So what I'm doing now is pulling that, just the very tip of that out. And you can see how that's making a very nice taper shape. Put the heat where you want the glass to move. Come out of the flame and give it a keep rotating, reminder to keep rotating and give it a gentle pull. You don't have to muscle the glass. It just takes a little bit of tugging to make that glass start to move. Keep your rotations even. You don't want to twist it yet. We will be twisting it in a minute. Right now we're just working on getting the shape down. But I'm a big fan of uh, the taper shape. So I like to make a nice smooth taper. And this is great exercise making these to help you control your rotation and because you have both hands working together. So it really works as a great exercise and it really works out well to develop the skills, you know, for more complicated projects when you do need to rotate your hands in unison and you're like working with two pieces of tubing. What I'm doing now is fire polishing out some of the tool marks from the smasher. You can see it left a little bit of lines uh, on the glass there, which is okay. Always make sure to polish out your tool marks. This way the glass looks nice and clean when you're done. And just continue to rotate and continue to work on that taper shape. And you can see how ni nicely the glass pulled out. And to start making the twist, which I'm doing now, is again, you come out of the flame, spot heat where you want the twist to be, take the glass out of the flame, let it cool down for like a second or two, and then just gently rotate one hand quicker or slower than the other, and you should get a nice twist in there. Be patient with yourself and the glass. Don't try to, you know, heat up the whole thing and twist it all up. It's better if you work less in stages rather than doing everything in one big movement. This way it gives you more control and just a nicer piece at the end. So again, be patient. There is a steep learning curve if you're just getting into glass with doing something like this. Um, this is actually one of the... Uh, most popular projects my students like to make is the glass, the glass ornament, spiral ornament, or icicle, whatever you want to call it, because it looks really cool, and it's not super hard to make, but it does take um, practice and time. So be gentle with yourself as you're making this. Well, right now I'm pulling out some glass to make that loop. I wanted to have the color in the loop, so... Um, I pulled that out. You could take the clear off if you want and just have, uh, not the clear, you could take the color off and just have clear at the end. But I kind of like the twisty going all the way into the loop. I think it just has a really nice effect. So that is what I did. And now I'm just taking my tweezers, putting a little bit of heat into that loop. It doesn't take much to make it move. It is very thin glass. And we're gonna tag it to the back where the loop meets the rest of the icicle. 
and make sure that's fully fused together and makes one smooth solid piece of glass. I'm lowering the flame now because you don't need a big flame. If you if you use too big of a flame with this, you're going to melt that loop back into a gather. And you don't want to close up that loop because then you're going to have to pull it again and uh, it just becomes a big to-do. So make sure you keep the loop open. Get that reamer in there. Do both sides. Straighten it out. Make sure everything looks good. And we are just about done with this project. Here's how it's looking so far. So you can see the color right on the edge of that clear. Looks really cool. And you can see how the clear continue, uh, not the clear, the color, the color continues into the loop. And the last step is to remove this from the punty. So I did hot seal it. Um, so I need to put some heat in there to remove it and have the tweezers at the ready. And just gently heat it up until it starts to bend. And, you know, support it with the tweezers and just remove your punty. Flame polish the end. You could peel off the color if you want and make it pointy or whatever you want to do there. I kind of like the way it looked, so I left it. And there is the finished piece. Really love this project. Again, not too hard to make, but the effect looks really awesome. Thanks so much for watching. Again, like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys in the next video.